guys, Coach Sass here, Sweet Spot Pitching. Just wanted to jump on here. I did a quick short um, on how to throw the perfect bullpen, but I uh, wanted to come on here and explain in a little bit more detail what that looks like. So anytime you're throwing a bullpen, it's a great idea to have it mapped out in terms of what you'd like to accomplish in that bullpen. You know, usually bullpens are thrown, you know, a couple days after your last outing or start. So one good tip is to think about you know, what might, might not have been working. Uh, so say you're really having trouble getting through your curveball or your changeup was running on you. You know, use your last outing and address where you were falling short. And that should be one of your number one focuses in that bullpen, okay? But the first thing I do want to address is that we're going to go four seam fastball out of the stretch, down and away. Now starters, we want to make sure that we're logging time in both the stretch and the windup in our bullpens. And ideally it would be, depending on you know your arm and where you are in the process of starts, if you got weak, like a week in between starts in high school, you can do a little bit more in between those. If you're more on a five day rotation or something shorter, we wanna make sure that we're throwing at least two bullpens in, be in between starts, a longer one of 60 to 70 pitches, one of about 30 pitches, um, and really getting after it. But all bullpens should start the same. They should be four seam fastballs out of the stretch. So we're here and we're going down and away. Okay, four seam fastball down and away. So a right-handed hitter down and away for a right-handed pitcher, obviously the opposite for lefties. And I mentioned this in the other video, but why? Throwing that pitch, a down and away fastball, is like a mechanical alignment. I can't execute that pitch if I'm not mechanically sound. If I'm flying open, the ball's gonna run here. If I'm mistimed and I'm jumping out, the ball's gonna run up, right? You've gotta have nearly perfect mechanics to execute down and away, four seam fastballs and repeat that. So that's where we're starting. Now listen, there are times, and there have been times in my career and many other pitchers that I've talked about that do the same type of bullpen where that down and away fastball becomes our biggest nemesis for the day and we just can't get it done. That's fine. That's fine, take deep breaths, remind yourself what you're trying to do, and you might throw 35 down and away fastballs and not be able to repeat it four times in a row. But what I'm saying is, it makes no sense to go on to other pitches. Because why? Why do, why do I need to throw a curveball or a changeup if I can't throw the number one pitch that I need to be able to execute, which is a down and away fastball consistently? So there's no point to move on to your other pitches because you know on that day, that mechanically you're not right. Something's just not working, right? Maybe we didn't get enough sleep or maybe we're a little bit dehydrated or whatever the case may be, or maybe we're young. Maybe we're eight, nine, 10 year old kids and just today I'm just, I'm off. And that happens and that's okay. But do not think that you're gonna get any value out of going back and throwing your change up and curveball and why? You already know because we can't throw that fastball consistently to that down and away location that mechanically I'm not right today. So just stay right there. Make it about creating arm speed. Make it about learning how to drive that front elbow. Make it about trying to power through this situation and, and get something out of it instead of going and putting yourself in a bad situation where mechanically we're not sound and now I'm going to try and get through all of my arsenal makes absolutely no sense. So another thing that I want to mention when we're talking about bullpens Okay, some of you younger kids might see this and not know what's going on, but I do want to address when we throw a bullpen, right? We're going to use our glove to indicate to our catcher what pitch is coming. So when we're doing the four seam fastball, what you'll do is you'll just go here. You're just going to flip your glove out this way, just like that. When we do that, the catcher knows that that's a fastball. That means fastball and it means four seam fastball. If you do this and you flip it out fastball and then go like that there, that's a two seam fastball, right? We gotta make sure that our catchers know what's coming so they can prepare for it. And that gives them a good idea of where you'd want them located in terms of setting up from a target perspective. So four seam fastball is this, two seam fastball is this. If you're gonna throw a curveball, it's this, right? We're just gonna flip that glove down. And now that catcher knows we're throwing a curveball in that situation, okay? And then this right here, pulling it back, that's gonna be your changeup. Okay, in that situation, if you've got a good four seam and two seam changeup, like I talked about in the changeup video, so you can do the same thing. We're gonna go change and then do this here. That means two seam changeup, right? If you just do it this way, 
he knows that's going to be your four seam changeup. And anybody that has a slider, it's more of this action, this little sideways flick here, slider. So fastball four seam, fastball two seam, changeup, changeup two seam, curveball, slider. So lock those in so you know and practice those. Right? It's a great way to communicate with your catcher without sitting there and having to tell him, hey, I'm throw, I want to throw fastballs or whatever. So you just, and the other thing, as you get better, so understand I'm looking at the plate right now. If I go that way, what do you think? So we're going fastball down and away. If I go this way, fastball in. So those are the signals that we're using to throw a good bullpen. Let's go back to now say we are locked in. So I'm out of the stretch as a starter. I'm out of the stretch. I'm going. Down and away fastballs. Bang, 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 bang. Repeat it. And I'm, I'm not saying like, like a pitching machine, but I'm saying in and around that area, right? If you're here, if you're blocking one in the dirt, then you're not locked in. But if you're really close over there, and we get four in a row, ideally we're going to go fastball in, four seam, right? We've got to make sure as right-handed pitchers and as left-handed pitchers, guys, there's not enough of this in the modern game. Back when I was coming up and certainly... The guys that I idolize, like Nolan Ryan, guys, you've got to own the inside of that plate. There are too many guys who do not know how to throw fastballs inside well. And guys that are leaning out over that plate, that fastball in could be one of your biggest weapons because it's really going to jam them up. Even if they do swing, probably going to jam themselves, get weak contact to the left side, and we'll get an easy out out of it. So after we throw our four here, let's throw one or two in. Let's make sure we've got the other side of the plate covered. Okay. Then after that, that looked good. Now you go center cut just to see where we are from a movement standpoint. So now we're going to go with that two seam fastball, right? Just throw it center cut and see how much movement you're getting on that particular day. Cause some days it'll vary. Some days it depends on the weather. Um, if you, you know, if you're higher in levels in college and, and beyond some, it depends on where you are in the country. I mean, the ball literally will travel, travel differently based on elevation, humidity, all sorts of different factors. So the first couple two seamers you throw, just have your catcher set up in the middle and just see about how much run you're getting and then have them move to whatever side you'd like to see. After we throw fastball and, and our two seam fastball, then we're gonna go back out here for a fastball, four seam, just one or two. And then we're gonna go with that one down, one over, one up approach. So now we're gonna go four seam fastball, again, or change up, I'm sorry. Four seam change up. Again, my catcher right in the middle of the plate. This is not a location pitch. This is a change up, meaning a change of speed is all we're looking to do. Like I said, you want that ball coming down the middle. You want that hitter to think, oh my God, this dude just made a mistake. And all of a sudden he's out on that front foot and we're getting easy outs because we get weak contact. But we're not going to get that if we're trying to dot that outer half or black this thing out and it's fading off and that hitter just winds up spitting on it. We've accomplished nothing. So change up right down the middle with that four seamer. You should see that catcher's glove kind of fade each time if you're throwing it right. And then after we do that, now we're going to go two-seam fastball. If you've got this in your arsenal, which I'm hoping you do, two-seam fastball. Throw one or two of those. Now we're going to go with that two-seam change. Okay, all of that looks great. Now, I was a curveball guy, so now I'm going to hammer off some curveballs. Two or three of those, maybe four or five, depending on you know the feel. Sometimes those are really tough because we leave them kind of hanging out. Remember, we're going to karate chop that hip. Stay through that doorway as we get out. Keep that chest nice and square. After I do that, if that's all I got, I wasn't a slider guy. So now I'm still out of the stretch, mind you. Now I go one or two more fastballs away. Then I'm going to go to the then I'm going to go to the full windup, and I'm going to keep that exact same routine. Now I got through the stretch. I got through all of my arsenal, right? Now I go to the windup, and I'm going fastball down and away, right? Because of course, it's a self-aligning pitch. It's going to mechanically make sure that I'm sound because I have to be to deliver that pitch down and away. So once that's done, out of the windup, three or four there, I go through the exact same sequence. So if you do that right, you do that well, you're going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 35 to 50 pitches for that bullpen, which should be fantastic. Great way to get through your whole arsenal. Now, this is where I'm saying if this is a longer bullpen day, and you've still got you know three or four days till your next start. Now, after we get through that routine, now you say, "Hey, coach, uh, you know that last game, man, my curveball it was it just I couldn't get through it. It just was spinning and staying up." Now, after we've gotten through our arsenal, now we're going to focus on that curve. We're going to throw five, ten, fifteen of them, whatever it takes to kind of find that arm action 
to get the break that we've been looking for, always finish up with one or two absolute letter fly fastballs down and away. That's where we're really going to gain that arm strength and that confidence to really let it fly. And, and then that's it. You're done. You know, go get your running in or whatever you guys do. But that's a perfect bullpen. We want to make sure we have it mapped out. We want to start with fastballs down and away to make sure we're mechanically aligned. We want to get through our arsenal if possible. But we also want to understand if mechanically I'm off, there's no point to throw mechanically unsound curveballs and mechanically unsound changeups. We just stay with that fastball and hopefully we can get to a point where we're repeating that delivery consistently. And if we can, it's okay. After all, we're all human. Some days it's just not our day and that's okay. So guys, like, subscribe. Thank you so much for stopping by. As always, if we have questions about this or your specific bullpens, please shoot me a comment. More than happy to help out. But thank you for stopping by. I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Thanks.